I am getting my captain's license. It's um, I'm not new to this, but and I won't go into why I need to get the captain's license right now. We'll save that for a different video. But um, I have actually been navigating boats on big water since 1980, and when I first started doing it, uh, dead reckoning and pilotage were the only ways to get around. We didn't have GPS. We didn't have uh, electronic navigation aids and things like that. Uh, this was the only way to do it. Uh, so I've got some real world experience working with this stuff. And I'm working with a captain's class uh, training program so that I can make sure that I know what's on the test and brush up on any of the things that I might have gotten rusty on along the way. Um, and as I was going through it, we got to the section where they were going to start to teach us how to convert true to magnetic to compass headings. And when they were going through it, they were using this phrase, this true virgins make dull company at weddings. Uh, and all those letters were supposed to remind you about what to do next and what you're supposed to put down on a table and fill out a bunch of numbers and things and, and convert all those directions. And, and uh, to be honest with you, I was like looking at this thinking, what the hell are they doing? Why are they making this so hard? when the information that you need is pretty much right on the chart in front of you and you can just kind of do it. Well, I'll show you how to do it when we get to that point. Um, and the other thing too is I kind of thought, you know, it's 2024, so, you know, making fun of uh, virgins for not being fun, uh, that's not what we kind of think of in 2024 is whether a person decides to have sex or not, doesn't determine whether they're gonna be a fun person or not a fun person. So I wasn't sure about the whole saying anyways. Uh, I mean, if we we shouldn't really make fun of any particular group of people. If we're going to make fun of any people, uh, the logical one to me would be, as a sailor, would be we should make fun of power boaters. You know, the gas guzzling, huge weight making power boaters. That's who sailors make fun of. Is we make fun of power boaters, right? Uh, but I'm just teasing the power boaters and they're brothers trying to pass the same test that I am out there. Uh, but, and I've even noticed that power boaters have been trying to sail. They've actually been flying sails from their boats recently. Uh, seems to be more and more often. And there's one sail manufacturer that seems to have a huge market in the power boat segment. And, and you know, I'd love to have stock in that company, but j just a, a note to both the power boaters and the, the manufacturer of these sails. If you're gonna make a sail move a boat forward, you have to tie down at least three corners of the sail. If you just have two corners flopping around, it's not gonna make the boat anywhere. So just keep that in mind and remember that this kind of sail is not gonna get any of us anywhere that we want to be. So I'm digressing, having a little fun. Uh, what you really came for is for me to show you how you can go through the US Coast Guard uh, navigation, chart navigation test module and never have to use TVMDC again. So let's get into that. The compass rose on the chart is comprised of two rings. The outside ring is the true heading ring where north or zero degrees is pointed directly at Earth's North Pole and this heading is perfectly parallel to the lines of longitude on the chart. The second ring, which is inside of the true ring, is the magnetic heading ring, and you are instructed to use 15 degrees variation for all of your course plotting. That happens to be just one quarter of a degree from the magnetic variation represented on the chart, which is a pretty negligible difference. Because this variation is already plotted right on your test chart, we're going to see how we can use the magnetic rows to eliminate the need to add or subtract variation to or from a compass or true heading. We're also going to look at how to handle compass error more efficiently. To do all this, we have to prepare our chart with some notations to compensate for compass deviation or compass error. You're going to be given a compass deviation table to use with the test. It will look something like this, if not exactly like this. It seems that the USCG captain's training programs want you to pull this table out every time you get a problem and look for the correct deviation to use. This just seems like extra unnecessary work to do for each problem, and that introduces multiple opportunities to make a mistake. To greatly simplify things, I propose that the very first thing you do when you begin your USCG chart navigation exam module is to transpose your compass deviation table onto one or more of the compass roses on the Block Island Sound test chart. 
I suggest that you pencil it in the rows between the true and magnetic rings. If you prefer, you can make the notations in the prescribed east or west deviations, but I feel that this again is another opportunity for a mental mistake when taking the test. I prefer to convert all the east deviations to plus signs with the numbers and all the west deviations to minus signs with the numbers. Doing this will remind me exactly what I should do when using the rows. Additionally, I will make arrows pointing outward at the 0, 90, 180, and 270 degree true points on the rows. This serves as a reminder that I use these numbers when working from inside going out. If I'm converting a true heading to a compass heading, I will see that I'm working against the arrows and be reminded to reverse the plus and minus signs for this calculation. When you are done, it would look something very similar to this on the chart. Of course, I would not make these notations on your test chart before you begin your exam. The test proctor may view this as some sort of attempt to cheat. I would simply make this the very first thing that I did when I began my test. I would get out the compass deviation table and transfer the deviations to the compass rows. Now that we're prepared, let me show you how easily this works without ever needing to set up a table to calculate TVMDC values or to remember a catchy phrase that reminds you when you're adding one way or subtracting going the other. It's this simple. For any test problem that provides the heading for the boat, by that I mean it says something like you are on a heading of 0 to 8 degrees per standard compass. The first thing you should do is pick up your dividers and head to your compass rows. Place one point of the dividers on the center crosshair of the rows and place the second point on 0 to 8 degrees magnetic. You will immediately see that in this direction the compass deviation is plus 3, or 3 east. So you simply take your dividers and rotate them plus 3 degrees to 0, 3, 1 magnetic. Then use your straight edge to draw the actual heading on the compass rows. That's it. The work is done. You are converted. You can see that 028 degrees compass equals 013 degrees magnetic, and that equals 017 degrees true. If you were paying attention, you will remember that the instructions were to use 15 degrees west for variation, which would make the correct heading 016 true. However, we lose a quarter of a degree to the true variation, which is only a minus 14.75 degrees, and, if you look closely, I just slightly missed the 031 magnetic line when I drew the heading, so it's intersecting the true rows at 017 degrees. However, this method is going to get you within one degree every time, and that's going to allow you to figure out the answer on the test quite easily. Now, if you are given other headings for the question that need converting, you're all set to quickly and accurately convert them all. For instance, if you're working a three fix location problem, then you can note the compass bearings for the three fixes and just work down the table. If 028 compass is 031 magnetic, then 172 must be 175. 114 becomes 117, and 190 equals 193. As a bonus hack for this type of question, if the question you are trying to answer does not provide any information in true headings, and it does not ask for any answers to be provided with true headings, and you are using parallel rules to plot your lines, don't waste your time converting to true. Just work entirely from the magnetic compass rows and save yourself the hassle. However, if the question asks for an answer in true degrees, or you are marking your bearings using a plotter, which only works in true bearings, then you can easily continue filling out the table by subtracting 14 from each of the magnetic bearings, or subtract 15 if you want to fix that pesky one degree mistake. Finally, if the test question had asked you to convert 017 degrees true to a compass heading, just work the compass rows from outside to inside. Just like before, use your straight edge to plot a line from the center of the rows through 017 true. You can easily see that 017 true equals 031 magnetic. Since you are working from outside to inside on the rows, you can notice you are going against the arrow, reminding you that you need to switch that plus 3 to a minus 3 and subtract 3 degrees to determine the per standard compass course of 028 PSC. 
Please do not walk into your test center and try this method without exploring it on your own. Get out your practice chart and your practice problems and give this method a try to see if you like the results you get. If I did you a favor today by giving you a new way to look at completing this kind of test question, you can return the favor by liking this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us. Please and thank you so much.